first time in Norway, first time KTM rally. Not Norway, it's just like 2,300 kilometers from home. So let's go. And we're super excited, huh? it's about to start. We are ready for the second day of the KTM Adventure Rally 2000. I think uh, the weather is going to be a lot better today so that we can uh, whack it a little better. Full rock on the right, a little bit of a descent, standing up, leaning back over the bumps, watch the roots, they're slippery. Again, waiting the outside peg, looking where he wants to go. Nice and easy, all the way in first gear, a little bit bumpy there. And then he comes up the ramp, carries momentum, goes through the bush, and that's it. Yay! Hand of applause for Andy. Right, guys, just to be clear, it's not about speed. We do evaluate speed, but if it's are you using the correct speed for the obstacle? So don't try go fast, because we don't have the medics here at the moment. I'm just joking. Of course we have them here, but we don't want to start the week with you in bandages. So Simon, nice and easy, buddy. Super relaxed. Ah, right, nice and smooth. As we said, guys, it's not about speed. Yeah, good job. Here's the bumpy section coming up. Oh, stalls it. Good save. Got a little bit of whiskey throttle there. 
From Oslo, so far ride right for you, eh? Two. <laughs> All right, and your machine, 890R rally. You love it. I do, but it's really been used, as you can tell. But, but that's what it's for, right? It's a tool, it's made to be used. We talk about this quite often, that, you know, it's our prize position. Obviously, they're pretty expensive as well, but it's there to be used, so good job for that. Are you ready for your obstacles? I hope so. Let's try. All right. You all good? You relaxed? Yes, sorry, I forgot the questions already. How, how's your experience? One, two, five. One being crap, five being good. Okay, a three, a three. He's a three. Is it your first adventure early? With KTM. Okay, first one with KTM. And I think that's about it, right? Let's give it a pop test. Let's go. All right, start your bike up. Let's wait for him to get out the way there. In three, two, one, off you go. Nice and easy. All right, standing up straight away, that's the way to do it. He's not a three, he's a five, come on. Carrying good pace over the roots there, you don't want to go too slow. Going nice and wiser, as you can see, to set himself up for the bumpy section. Keeping the right amount of momentum. Over the rock there, up the ramp. And big round of applause, good job, man. He 690 is a really good all right bike. Quite easy to ride. Nice and smooth. Lots of more participants going out onto the course. Right, he decides to make his life a little more quicky. <laughs> so ideally a figure of eight is better, but it's of course you can't get lost. There's no off ramps, there's no freeway. A little bit slippery there with the wet grass over that log. That's it. Good recovery. Good job. All right, look up if you want to go nice and smooth. Yep. All right. Keep going, keep going, keep going. Keep going. Steady up and flow up. That's it. That's it. That's it. Come in. Yep. Round of applause. Good job. Come on, guys. Come on. Yep. It's about the camaraderie. You see, buddy's helping out you. Okay. Chris, what happened here? He didn't miss out on the riding school. Uh, Chris Birch, <laughs> say, say, what does that say? Is that your slogan? <laughs> say no to slow. So he went a little bit slow and stole the bike. But that happens. Yes, he knows. He's uh, shaking his head. There we go. He's going to redeem himself now. There we go. Keep pace over the rocks. It's nice and smooth on the couch. Nice and wide. Setting himself up over the logs. There we go. Greg Gordon pointing out the line there. Buddy, this is not a screw. Keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going. Good job. He's off, coming down the downhill. Look up and round the corner. Oh, oh, that was a big one in the hole. Oh, he held it up. Well done. He was looking for the rock there and he found it. Yeah. Teacher, you got Greg Cordini and an ex-world champion helping you out. You know you're in good hands. Said while you were riding, this is like Bangladesh, but a little bit more difficult. <laughs> Not really, right? <laughs> All right, AJ, let's give it another try, man. You did well, buddy. All right, off you go. Track's all yours. Let's go, AJ! Woo! Nice, AJ. Yeah, yeah. There you go. Whoa! Yep. Yeah. Woo! Woo! All right, so that's actually one of our bikes. I just realized it now. Brand new. So running it in now. That will be for sale afterwards if everyone wants to. Speed, 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 speed. There, my boy. There we go, AJ. Good Ooh. job. Wow. Nice to meet you. Nice to Hello. How are you? <laughs> you almost didn't make it. Coming from Greece is quite far away, but I'm so excited that I'm here. I'm so happy. 
I would probably fall over, but I'm very happy. <laughs> all right, are you ready for this? Okay, so first of all, your skill level is what? One, five. Yeah, One is shit. Five is Javier de Solte. Six, <laughs> then for you. <laughs> One point five. Optimistic 1.5, and you've done how many KTM Adventure Rallies? This is the third KTM Adventure Rally, yeah, there we go. She's self navigating, yes, but she's giving it a try. All right, you ready? Three, two, one, off you go. I actually rode her bike last year, it's never been the same. All right, nice, easy looking up, nice and relaxed. Greg, do your job, man. Yeah, there we go. Nice and relaxed. Yeah, there we go. Super clean. Keep going. Don't feel jack of us. Yeah, we run the house. singing. <laughs> All right guys, uh, big warm welcome, or actually truly welcome, should I rather say, uh, to the 2023 European KTM Adventure Rally. All right, let's see by a quick raise of hands, who is participating at their first KTM Adventure Bike Rally? Big round of applause. Welcome to the family guys, welcome to the family. Let's have a look at, uh, let's start off with, I tell you what, everybody, who has arrived here on a motorcycle. So you rode here on a motorcycle, put your hand up. All right, now, if you rode, keep your hands up. If you rode less than a thousand kilometers, put your hand down. Less than 2,000 kilometers, put your hand down. Whoa, that's some distance here. I see there's a tail here. Less than 3,000, hand down. Now this is riding all the way. You can't include flights from Colombia, just to be clear. But he's still riding. Okay. Okay, as long as he's still riding, eh? Two wheels all the way. Okay. From Austria. Okay, well let's see how we go. So we're on, what are we on? 2,000. 2,000. If, if you've ridden more than 3,000, keep your hand up. Jeez. More than 4,000. I'm not even going to go further. I would love to hear where you came from. Just shout out to me how far you've ridden. Here we go. Maria's going to bring you a. There's two guys in the center. One. All right, where's the heads up? Yeah. All right, where are you from? Germany, but we was born in the North Cup. in total did you ride? Uh, 6,400? 6,200. 6,200. Okay, you on 6,400, you on 6,200. Who took the shortcut? 6,200. Both of you. Okay, you will both have just both won a free entry into next year's Cajun Adventure Rally. Here. And there was one more at the back. Here we go, here we go. All right. 
right here. I'm finding you right. It was also North Father, I was chasing the guys, but I had no uh, shorter distance from Poland from Warsaw. Uh, there we go, well, fantastic. There we go, there's your, there's your luggage. Oh, it fits on the bike and then huh? <laughs> Alright guys, so I'm gonna hand out one of these certificates to you. You take that to Tanya and she'll sort both of you guys out uh, later this evening for extra participation. <laughs> You know, obviously the terrain is going to be pretty tricky tomorrow. It will be slippery. Um, there are quite a couple of fast sections. And I think maybe good to mention as well, you see a 450 rally bike up on stage, uh, Kevin Benavides' bike. So we took a bit of inspiration from the rally side because obviously, you know, adventure riders take inspiration from, from rally riders. So on the routes, we've tried to make it very, let's say, rally-ish, uh, quite fast, quite open, and there's obviously a couple of technical sections. So. What are some of the things that you should, let's say, prepare before you actually start? Because I think that's kind of where it starts, right? I think uh, a big thing for uh, the coming ride is going to be preparing for the conditions. Uh, it's, uh, we've all experienced how quickly it can change here. Like, it could be really warm one minute, it could be really cold the next. So you, obviously your gear is going to be really important. Um, obviously when you get cold, it's very hard to ride your bike properly. Uh, you know, when you get cold, it's very distracting. Your reaction times increase. Um, you lose the feeling in the brakes and clutch, all that sort of stuff. So making sure that your gear is ready is actually a really important safety thing for tomorrow as well, as well as your obviously your, your comfort. Hopefully I can preach, sorry, practice what I'm preaching, and my riding gear does show up in the airport in time. Yeah, so, okay, I offered that you can use some of my riding gear, but, you know, we're about the same length, but width-wise, we're slightly different. So Chris said, no, your XL is not going to work, so you might see him in his, in his shorts and flip-flops, um, but he'll definitely give it a crack. So, all right, Chris, I think there's one thing, you know, as you said, it's the preparation and something, there's a couple of, you know, things that come to mind when I was younger. My dad always said it's the three P's, piss, poor preparation. Uh, and that's, you know? Yeah, so we had more P's in New Zealand. I'm sure, but I don't think piss, poor preparation prevents, no, perfect preparation prevents piss, poor performances. <laughs> Did you write that down? No, no, you must remember that English is Rian's second language. Thank you. So we had to tone it down for him. The important thing about the preparation is as we ride out of here, like for me, I've never ridden in Norway before. I have no idea what it's like. So just taking those early kilometers quite e uh, easy and like learning to, like, to test the traction. Uh, what does this road color represent? Uh, a big thing for me, uh, traveling into many different countries all the time, I say to myself, like, learn the colors. What colour dirt has traction here? I don't know. Better find out gently rather than charging. Brown ones. Yeah. Well, in some countries it is, right? Yeah. In my country, the whiter, the lighter the soil, the less traction it has. The darker, the deep, the deeper the soil, the more traction. I don't know what that is in Norway. So just those easy first kilometres, like, okay, test it out, feel the brakes, feel the tyres, rather than just full seam. Okay, stuff. so that's my first problem. <laughs> quick one, Ag. Well, not so quick, perhaps, but I would like to say that I see a lot of guys are asking is about settings on the bike. So as the bikes have come, you know, they've kind of grown through the years and you've got traction control and that type of stuff. Would you talk us through, you know, take a few minutes and talk us through some of the different settings for different terrain and what you'd recommend, obviously bearing in mind that you've got guys that are at the top end and, and then you've got guys at the bottom end and how like the settings affect those guys. So, so if you're this guy, what are you aiming for? If you're this guy, what are you aiming for? A bit of like basics on that. Yeah, I think a big sort of uh, factor as well is, is like your confidence, how you're feeling, that sort of thing. So if we talk about like, like rally mode, for example, on the modern bikes, we have the, the, the one to nine level of, of assistance. You know, at the start of the day, when I'm all excited and full of energy and ready to go, I run very little assistance because I want to slide and play. As I get tired, I want more help. You know, as my day gets longer, I want more help, especially from you know, multi-day riding, long trips, that sort of thing. So a good way to think about those rally settings is to think of it in units of help. The more button, the more, the higher the number, the higher the help. So um, that's where I messed it up. Okay, so we have one, which is almost off. You're on your own. Yeah, yeah. We have right. nine, which is equivalent to rain mode. And with the new bikes, you can actually take it to zero. And I thought that's the setting I should be riding in. It no, looks sexy as hell for a short period of time. You're a nine. <laughs> yeah, you too. 
<laughs> but that's really interesting that you mentioned that because I, I know like I've chatted to guys in the past in different places and you know a guy will always be like is they'll say that thing where like no I switch it all off man I don't need this crap and like literally standing here you know next to someone like you you know with your your history and talent and you're going like I like the help like there's times where I want to use this and I remember I chatted to Alfie actually mentioned that to me Alfie Cox back in South Africa and when he said that I was like whoa if 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 someone like you know Alfie wants that assistance I was like that kind of changes everything so for me that's a really interesting point where you don't get to the point where you're like yeah I don't need any of that stuff it's almost like an arrogance more than a skill thing absolutely yeah I mean, it's, you know beating a chest muncher and male stuff a lot of the time right um, and especially like we talked about before in the early part of the ride as you're trying to you know, learn your colors, learn your terrain, that sort of thing, the extra help from like maybe like off-road mode with a, a mild throttle response, um, limited wheel spin, that sort of thing, could be really beneficial as you're sort of feeling out the new terrain and getting used to the, the new riding environment. I think one thing speaking to our R&D team is, you know, obviously with technology, uh, and with the way that um, your emissions are going, you know, for example, you cannot disconnect ABS on the front wheel anymore. But why would you want to? Exactly, that's the point. But this is where the R&D team at KTM, luckily they also have the same KTM mentality. They said, okay, we will, we'll need to bring in these systems, but ultimately our goal is to make our riders not just safer, but also faster. Uh, now, again, being, I have been a KTM rider for most of my life, so being very egotistical, I have the same approach. I need to switch all of this nonsense off. Um, I was watching some of the guys on the skills challenge today, and of course, it's always easy to watch and criticize. I wasn't riding. Um, but something that came to mind is the least amount of RPM gives you the maximum amount of traction. Uh, and if you have these safety features on, it ensures that you have the maximum amount of traction. Even if you do something stupid, it will say, hey, listen, idiot, you don't need 100% throttle, you actually need 40, off you go. Yeah, for me, where I, I think the most benefit for, I'll find from the rider aids on this ride, will be on the, um, on the wet tar seal section. So, you know, I'm running, this is my bike, I'm riding, not many tires, I'm not the world's greatest road rider. So, man, I know from my side, I lean on the, the traction control, the ABS and the stability control probably way more than I realise. I realise I'm using it a lot, but uh, it's probably doing much more than I actually think it is. And, you know, these knobbly tyres are not going to be great on these wet roads. I'll be switching straight back to street mode or even rain mode uh, for those uh, windy roads. And just, again, that allows me to enjoy it more. I'm not freaking out. I'm not at my limits. I can look around a bit more. Yeah, you, you sort this out for me. So correct me if I'm wrong, so if we recap this, so a good basis would probably be if you choose to ride in rally mode, maybe have it on slip, slip 6 or slip 8 in the beginning as a try. You can always reduce it down or you can reduce it up. Um, I mean a good, good suggestion is definitely off-road ABS. Yeah, I would say like for the, for the lesser experienced riders as we on the first bits of gravel, put it in off-road mode, have the mild power response, have the extra assistance, figure it out in your own time, enjoy it. Then when you get a bit more uh, into it, rally mode's great. Start winding it down until you're going back too far. Wind it back up again. All right. So what I think we should do is, and if you don't mind, Chris, so that's that's all great about the electronics. And there's a lot of KTM staff and R&D people on hand to help you out. So if you're not sure what setting is the best, just ask someone. Right, so this is kitted out. So you've got some pro components on here, got some special wheels and some proper knobblies. So it means you, you are prepared. All the gear, some idea. A little bit of idea, okay. You also, your seat, how, you're quite a tall rider. How do you prefer seat set up? I mean, you like a bit taller, I guess. Yeah, so what leads right into us, the first thing I wanted to talk about you guys is, is the seated position. So something you're coming across a lot that we're doing all these riding schools around the world is people think you have to stand up the whole time you're anything off of asphalt. And it's just not true. Uh, back in the days, it was. Uh, like earlier adventure bike designs, the, the packaging wasn't saying that the seat, the tank pushed you all the way back behind the foot pegs. You couldn't get your weight up over the front. But now as bikes have evolved and changed, like you can see, I can sit right up over the foot pegs now. That's something that we couldn't do back in the days. So to get that weight central, we always had to stand. Now we can sit 
and as long as we're sitting in a good, strong, you know, active position, we can get away with a lot more these days sitting down than we used to. Like you look at like the top rally guys, you know, motocross guys, that sort of thing, they're sitting down a lot. And it's not to be lazy, it's times where it's more efficient and it's times where it's faster. So I can sit like an, an inch further forward so I can have the stand to see. And that determines whether or not I need to stand up more or less, just that little bit extra. So the big thing is you want to be central on the bike. So if I sit back here and put my weight on the bike, you, guys, you can see it's just the shock compressing. I'm behind the middle of the bike. So the back tires are going to be loaded more in the front, and there's gravel that we can have. The front's more inclined to wash around and ceramics. It's not as planted. And if I bring my weight forwards over my foot pegs, so my hips are directly over my foot pegs, that gets me central to the bike. A good way to remember it is the middle of your seat is not the middle of your motorbike. Where you sit is where you should stand. Oh, that's, I like that. The middle of your seat is not the middle of your motorbike. I think that's a, that's a key takeaway there. Something else. Guys, just to bear in mind, you know, you had a lot of the ambassadors stand earlier, you know, a lot of them at the table at the back there. I promise you these guys are all the nicest guys you're going to meet in this sport. You can go up to them at any time, you meet them out on the track, you see them eating lunch, go talk to them, go sit with them, ask them for those little tips and, and stuff. If you're riding along and they're around you, say, hey, would you mind following me for a few hundred meters and just get an idea? The guys are all more than welcome, to, more than happy to do it. That's, you know, the guys are here to share their knowledge. So take advantage of it, enjoy it.
その裏
Den lupen oppe her er den her Det er for godt litt annet å kjøre der Vi må bare fortsette
right? So what, what is the technique to this? Obviously going slow, but you know, it's, it's easy to go fast, but to go slow is pretty difficult. So, you know, you told us, you gave us a lot of tips, hips out, and by the way, I've been practicing that. It's, it really works, strengthen your core and everything else. So what's the technique to this? I think a little about clutch control and balance, and the slower you can go up the climb without wheel spinning. And your tires are looking pretty good. All right, Chris, if you want to line up. So guys, Chris is going to show us how this is done. By the cones there, Chris. All right, guys, so we're going to go with the same figure of eight. And what we're going to do is, I don't know if this is a good benchmark, but we're going to time Chris to see how long it takes. Now, just to make me clear, every time you put your foot down, it's plus two seconds. Yeah? Chris, when you're ready, all yours. All right, he's already standing up. He's basically not moving. Yeah, yeah, you should go. You should go. Okay, all right, off he goes, eventually. Alright. Kind of cool guy just passing the barely missing the umbrella. Chris, was that on purpose? Saving the Saving the Marvel. There we go, I'm back. <laughs> oh, two seconds, two seconds, he was getting cocky there. Let's see how he navigates this section. This is quite a tricky section. See, he's trying to take his front wheel around the outside of the goal of rock there. Lines himself up nicely. And this will get up the hill. Tries are looking good. Hold on a second. Can't hear you. I got those two seconds now, yeah? I guess so. Where do you go? Oh. Opa. There we go. Thanks, Claire. When you're ready, Peter. Three, two, one. All yours. So Peter's got amazing touch control, grabbing the rear brake all the as slowly as possible. Nicely setting himself up. Trying to keep far left up. So he's got a good line going down the hill. And as I said last night, it's always easy standing here commentating. Like I said, unfortunately, I don't have my gear yet. But I think this is where you can make a lot of time, a little decent there. The box is rolling. Pretty tricky there with the rocks. A little bit slippery. Peter doing an amazing job. Oh, look at that. Look at that. Oh, one hold there, one there. Oh, wow. Peter. Round of applause. Come on, guys. Let's cheer everyone. Peter is doing an amazing job here. And what I love seeing is using the KTM technique to pick up your bike, just manhandling it. And if you guys have seen how the GS guys do it, they walk backwards towards their bike and they pick it up like this. Yeah, no, we don't do that. See, it's slippery there. You see, every time Peter releases the clutch, it just spins up the rear wheel. And he's lining himself up nicely there. Chris's tip, you can make up a lot of time up here, as slowly as possible, it's quite tight here. There we go, keep going Peter, keep going, hoppla. Here we go Peter. Johnny, when you're ready, let's see how slow you can go. Three, two, one. Here you go. So he's got the two finger technique there. And I'm gonna walk next to Johnny, to try and piss him off. Oh yeah, no. Okay, he has a small one there. Yeah.
Did you guys enjoy the quarry today? The quarry. Yeah, the quarry was awesome, huh? I saw a couple of bikes lying over. It doesn't matter. All right, Christina, you, you, you're quite a good rider. I mean, we saw you do a ride run through here going nice and slowly. She's just laughing, smiling. She's nervous. Christina, start your bike up. Let's see how you go. When you're ready, 
you can go for it. Women have way more finesse than guys. So First lady competitor, except for Giacomo, obviously. <laughs> Guys, a round of applause for Christina. Come on, let's hear it. Christina, amazing job. Yeah, there we go.
You okay? Yeah, there's a field down there that's crashed and there's no reception there, so I'm just trying to figure it out. It seems okay. Then no worries. Sorry? No worries? Nah, she's okay. Just a bit uh, scared. Oh, <laughs> 